to do a little experiment. I can't see you, but hopefully you can see me. Um, I want you to raise your hand if you have a cousin or a sibling or a parent in this room. In this room with you. That's not a lot of people. Okay, now let's see how many of you have a Facebook friend or a Twitter follower or instant message buddy in the room. <laughs> now this may seem utterly unremarkable to you. This is a gathering of like-minded people and of course you're connected in various ways. But it is the case that for most of human history this would have been an astonishing situation. At community gatherings of this kind in the past there would have been many more kin ties than there are and many fewer virtual relationships uh, with friends and colleagues from far off places. Understanding this change, how we got from that hand raising ratio to the one we have today uh, is vital to understanding the forces remaking our societies today. The spread of, di spread of digital life uh, is not a force on its own. It has coincided with the very moment in human affairs over the last several decades in which we have become a deracinated, rootless human community. What do I mean by that? Family ties have frayed over the same period that technology has done all the remarkable things we're talking about today. A majority of human beings, as of the mid-2000s, uh, began to live in cities rather than villages. First time in human history. We are now an urban majority civilization. And communal activity has evaporated in many parts of the world, perhaps best captured in the book Bowling Alone. If in the past the iconic image of community participation was standing up at a local festival or dancing and singing with, yes, your cousins, today it is perhaps sitting at home on your wedding night um, by yourself, <laughs> tapping a few corrective keystrokes into a wiki or commenting on a comment, that guy set me up so well, <laughs> um, commenting on a comment on a blog post half a world away. I want to talk to you today about what our transition into digital life portends for us as a species. Not in terms of the cool new things we'll be able to do and the remarkable efficiencies we'll be able to capture. Those important perspectives have been uh, very well represented here. Rather, I'd like to talk about what happens to our minds and our hearts when we become digital people and to raise some questions that might help to push us in the direction of evolving a new philosophy for these dizzying new times.